Shalom and good day all, this is Tehillim 29 back again for another manga I have recently re read through uh, video and first things first let's go through the list of titles that I have actually read through this time around uh, for this particular video and I've read these between um, last month and this month uh to which this month is moving on to may so april in the may so i'll start off with the things that i've been that i read first and as you can see there we have vagabond then we have vinland saga we have Blue Lock, Volume 5, Tokyo Revengers, Trojan X, Spriggan, Deluxe Editions, Volumes 1 to 3, and there's one more expected to come out for that. We also have Nejima, and it's really nice to catch up with Nejima, um, the Omnibuses. So two and three, I do have more of these to read, and I'm looking forward to that. And yeah, okay, we've got a bit of a graphic novel in here, which will get a review, but it's the only graphic novel in this list. So, going from what I finished last to what I started first, uh, we'll begin with the Cami Garcia and uh, Gabriel Piccolo, or Piccolo, um, Teen Titans Robin. And one thing I do need to bring across about this particular story is that this is an Elseworlds story. But the way that this story comes across, it feels like, uh, well, with the out, uh, with this particular Elseworlds story, it almost comes across is uh, with, what if Damien was actually the second Robin in the Batman series? That's how it comes across in the particular story. Um, another thing too is that the beginning feels a little bit jarring. But throughout the rest of the story, you do get some good moments and some other moments that didn't feel quite necessary. Um, it was nice to see sort of like some of the backstory, but it would have even been better to, to, like when you start off the beginning of the story, to at least give a bit of backstory as to um why this event occurred of the releasing of um beast boy and raven and i do feel how this story has been done it also neglects the previous stories uh to which have been done by kami garcia and i do feel that there's sort of like a small slight insert with the character, or the writer and artist, with some of the characters that are done in this, and that's not really necessary. Um, apart from that, I would like to give this Elseworld story of uh, the Teen Titans Robin probably a 6.5 out of 10. Like I said, there were some good moments, but it's not top tier. But at least, good try anyway. Um, so, moving into the next thing that I finished. And that was, of course, Nejima. And I must admit, it's really good to get back in the Nejima again of this Omnibus series. I know I've recently covered the first one in probably one of my older videos that you see on the channel. And as I began to read through this, 
it was actually nice to see a little bit of a rival character to the character of Nejima. And yes, the character is in fact male, and it's really nice to learn that the character is male, but you also learn that the character is also a werewolf. And uh, well, seeing that this deals with the topics of, say, fictional magic in the story, um, okay, I think it sort of worked. But that's not to say that they didn't have some good moments in the story, which they were for um, Omnibus 2 and Omnibus 3. So for this, I'm going to give Ken Akamatsu's uh, ne Nejima um, an 8.5 out of 10. And yes, it's a little bit higher than what I, lift, uh, what I brought up before for the last thing that I covered. All right. Now the next thing is Spriggan. I know I ended up checking out the Spriggan um, animated series on Netflix recently. And yes, there are a lot of things that the episodes do miss. But in what they do miss, it's not actually a lot. There's actually quite a bit they do get right. And as I was reading through, like, these Spriggan volumes, it's like they took um, parts connected to some of these volumes. Yes, it might not be the whole kit and caboodle, but at least it gives us, uh, the audience, a bit of a taste as to what the um, series of this actually offers. Now, moving into the actual manga, I quite enjoyed the manga, and there were actually some places where um, it, it sort of left little plots, but to come back to those plots later, so, but you also get a bit of a backstory around um, you, you Onome, if I remember. And how he sort of was actually chosen to be a part of a project, of course. And he was actually saved by, oh, what was the group in the story? I think it was Arkham. Through Japan. And after that, he's sort of like working with them, doing jobs for, or doing many missions with them. Yes, one involves sort of like a, um, going to an arc, another goes to sort of like the Devil's Islands or the Devil's Triangle, for example. Um, there's like many other pla many places that they actually explore in the story. And one of the concepts in this, which I find really interesting, and I wonder where they come up with the idea of it from, is... Um, what if some of these weapons that are, what if some of these events that are connected to biblical times uh, it's the only way to bring it across um were actually connected to sort of like ancient weapons um whether it's the tower of babel um noah's ark that, that's just some of the examples that are used within the story and it's like a real dive into that in a what-if situation. Not that it actually reflects what happens in the scriptures, for example. But it's an interesting observation of things with how this story is delivered. Uh, but you also see it with other stories and myths as well, which are presented... Uh, within Spriggan, not just, say, biblical, but you you could go, for example, maybe to some Indian myths, and they sort of explore, okay, what caused this event, and was it connected to one of these ancient weapons as well? And it was really, really fun to learn about the character's story in it, but also to learn if some of these stories or events were actually true. 
So for the overall for Spriggan, um, I can't wait until Volume 4 comes out. I I'm going to definitely look forward to it because it will be the last volume out of this. And hopefully by then, Netflix will actually put out maybe another season or two of Spriggan, but also covering more of the stories that are in Spriggan. Because I understand with the six episodes that they put up there, they practically had to pick and choose which six stories that they were going to give the audience. And you do get a little bit from, say, the first, the second, not so much the third, but mainly the first and second of the deluxe editions. So an 8.5 out of 10, uh, only because of the manga's execution, not the anime's execution. Now moving to Trojan X, to which Trojan X is done by the writer, uh, done by the story creator of Tokyo Ghoul. I must admit, this was an interesting story. And I'll say one thing. I, I think the supporting character is a little bit more interesting than the main character. But that's not to say that the main character doesn't bounce off the supporting character well. Uh, there are moments where it does work. Other moments... It does tend to drag it a bit. Um, I'll definitely look forward to the second volume, but I think for, for this one, I'm just going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. So it's got my interest. I just want to see how it executes maybe in the next couple of volumes. Tokyo Revengers. Oh my goodness. This series has been worth the pickup. Um, I've enjoyed learning about Takamichi and also some of the events that he has to prevent from happening <laughs> as he goes between sort of like past and future, or f future to the past and past to the future. Um, but also with him trying to gather his personal courage in situations um, for this, an 8.5 out of 10. I've already got the next volume here ready to read, but it might be a while before it shows up on the channel. So, yes, 8.5 out of 10. Moving into the next one, and that is Blue Lock. Oh, my goodness. Talk about a story a creator that absolutely has a passion for... soccer this story is really ex uh, really fun in its execution as you get to learn about the characters and not only the characters but you also get to learn about the, tr the trials that they go through and also how they get their team to work together and, until they finally also start to learn their own personal signature moves to which they can use against an opponent for this, a 7.5 out of 10. Now it's time to move on to... Shalom and good day all. This is Tehillon29. Back again for part 2 of um, the previous video. And of course, with the previous video of um, manga I've recently read through, I didn't get to finish... Um, the last two couple of chapters... Uh, to which in this, uh, oh, the last two couple of part, or the last couple of manga, uh, being Vinland Saga. Uh, as I feel that this story is drawing close to an end, uh, I give it a 9 out of 10. Moving in the last but not least, Vagabond. As Vagabond here centers around the character of Miyamoto Musashi, and in this this is sort of like his uh, training arc whilst farming, but also other things as well. Uh, for this, I am going to give it an 8 out of 10. Until then, let's keep it colourful and have yourself an awesome day.